In the morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ, how are you today? Welcome to St. Mark Bemidji's podcast, the podcast that probably won't rake up your leaves and mow the lawn, but proudly proclaims the promises of God four times a week. If you like what you're listening to right now, you can subscribe to it on your phone or computer and listen to us all the time. If you're watching on YouTube, you could also click the little bell and be notified the moment a new podcast is published. There's a good chance you're watching or listening to this on YouTube right now. There are share links right there in the app, right below the video window. You can share this content with a friend or that random person you like to bug in the checkout line and talk about what you heard today. Ask your pastor about it. If you don't have a pastor, go out and find one. I hear they like to talk about God. But both the podcast and YouTube have a share link at the very top of the show notes if you'd rather just give that link to a friend. Let me know if you can't find it at john.kirk at stmarksbemidji.org. Today's devotion is titled, What Does the Righteousness Say? It's based on a reading from Romans chapter 10, verses 5 through 13, and is written by Pastor Allard from St. Louis Park, Minnesota. We'll read just a section, just a piece, Romans chapter 10. As scripture says, anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame. For there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So far the word. We don't do this very often in the English language, but our lesson's going to do it. It personifies the righteousness that God gives us, as if the righteousness itself, the gift, is speaking. And that is our theme for today, is the question, what does the righteousness say? And we'll first see today, we'll first hear how that righteousness says, don't say, don't say. That salvation is unattainable. Instead, be a name caller. Call on the name of the Lord. Now, as we look at this lesson, I want to talk about a problem that Israel, the church state known as Israel, had. Where did the problem with the Israelites begin? And you might say, Pastor, we know that it started with Adam and Eve. But specifically to the Israelites themselves. When did it begin? And I might frame the answer to that question by saying there's two religions. Here's a little review, right? There's a religion of do. You do. And the religion of done. It's all done by someone else. That's the two religions of the world. But why then does God start dropping verses like this? He directs his apostles simply to quote the Old Testament, which is the person who does these things will live by them. That sure sounds to me, doesn't it? Of those two categories, A or B, works or grace, what is it for someone? Sure sounds like we got a religion of works, dead to rights. God himself said it. And then God goes on. We could say, oh, God has... This is ridiculous how I'm speaking. I'm speaking like a fool. But God puts on different masks. He gets up on the wrong side of the bed. He has different emotional mood swings from day to day. So when Jesus came, by that point, God was saying different things. Except he wasn't. I would highlight an example from the Gospels where a lawyer, an expert in God's law, came to Jesus and said, Lord, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Good question, right? And Jesus said, well, the law. How do you read it? And the lawyer did a good job. He said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. And, and, Lord, love your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus said, you've answered correctly. Do this, and you will live. There are two big ways of a teacher passing knowledge to students. One of them is just lay it out. And there are many places where God does this. In fact, we get so used to God just laying out the truth. 
that we don't necessarily catch when he does this. What he said to that lawyer was, I'm giving you a statement, and now you make a logical deduction with the truth that I put in your heart. So go and do this, and you will live. And anybody who's got the Holy Spirit in their hearts is going to say what? I can't. If we took every other verse out of the Bible, those verses like, for it is by grace you have been saved, through faith, and it's not from yourself, it is a gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. Take all those verses out of the Bible, and all you're left with is this. Jesus saying, go and do likewise. You could stop at serve God and love him with all my heart. I never get that. So we look at words like that and then ask, well, Jesus, then why do you say verses like this? If even the Old Testament church was by grace, and it was, every single year on the highest day, the Day of Atonement, what did they do? The highest holy day of the theocracy of Israel. They took all the sins of the people and they put it on themselves? No. On a goat. And they sent that goat out in the wilderness. The goat died, not the people. The very heart of the religious life of the Old Testament church was grace. And it was only because the Israelites themselves took that grace and perverted it and turned it into something God never planned. It was never God's idea to make his commands into a gauntlet that you have to pass through. It was never his idea, if you want to use a modern day example, to make his religion, if you will, into American Ninja Warrior, which is on its, like, what, 16th season now? You had to have at least heard of this show at this point, where you go through all these different obstacles, and the most grueling one, I think, is the one where you have to climb up with that metal pole and keep hopping up and hooking a pole, doing this the whole time up a tower. And finally, at the end, there's the last tower, and you hit this bell on the top, and the lights go flashing. Is that what it is? I finally reached you, God. I finally made it. No. An animal died. You, Israel, do not. The Messiah dies. All of Israel does not. So why do you drop verses like this then, Lord? Well, because it's true. If you live by the commands of God, if you do them, you will live. But we can't. And so the teacher is teaching us. Make the logical deduction, dear sons and daughters of the king. Figure it out. And come to me. I would ask one more time then what's the point of God's law at all? Well, let me put it to you this way. A soldier who wears armor, is the armor the source of the soldier's life? You, you would say, what a ridiculous question, Pastor. Of course it's not the source of the soldier's life. The life came from the parents, from God, from both. True. So we just throw the armor out then. The soldier can just peel it off and throw it away because it's of no value. This is what the obedience of God does. This is its function. It protects the free gift of righteousness that God has given to us. It defends the free gift of life that God has put into us, that goes right on through your funeral. Life never came from following the commands of God, but they do protect the very faith that saves you. So we might say, good, okay, and very pragmatically, being the pragmatic creatures that we are, say, okay, following God's commands protects me in some way, and so I'll do it. And our faith devolves into nothing more than a business transaction. I'll scratch your back out, I'll do some things you like, and then you protect me. We're all good, right? There's more. A God who says to his son, but no, the son, before the father even speaks, the son says, Lord, father, they can't. I can't. 
you're going to take the sin of the entire history of the human race on you. Yes, I can. Do you understand what this means? Yes, I accept it. Then I will crush you with all of my rage against all sin for all time. Yes, Father. That's the reason we listen to the commands of God and follow them forever and perfectly in this life until we reach heaven, and yet we still do. All the commands of God are meaningless garbage until you understand the love of God. Then you seek the commands out. Then you say, Lord, I'm never going to get it right, but I want to know. Tell me. Tell me your will. Tell me how you think. Tell me how you live. And I want to do it. And when I fail, and then when I realize original sin never leaves me, so I'm like always failing every second, I'll get up and try again. This is the reason we listen to the will of God. So don't say salvation is unattainable when Jesus did it all for you, because he could instead call on the name of the Lord. That's it. I just believe in my heart that you're actually Lord, God and Savior, and I profess, and I'm saved. Yeah, that's it. Do you see how that slippery eel that is our sinful nature might go from salvation is totally unattainable to it's too easy. See how that works? You're telling me, here's the temptation, that there is no titanic odyssey that I have to undergo. I have to go into the underworld and wrench some magic chalice from some demon and then bring it back up to the surface world, and then say, Dear God, I've attained salvation. There's nothing like that? No. Are you saying the B-I-B-L-E, yes, that's the book for me, and all those Sunday school songs, and me sitting, and the Sunday school teachers saying, Jesus loves you, and he forgave your sin, and then people who actually take God's word happily and seriously, a mom, teacher, pastor, telling me, I think this might be damaging your soul. You might want to think twice about this habit. That's the eternal God coming to me? It's too easy. But dear friends, that is it. Jesus is so near that he comes to us in a million different directions, from people who actually take God's word happily, and from all these different books and apps all over the world from which you can read God's word. There it is. God did it. God can. So call on the name of the Lord. And if we think that it's easy, our faith life journey is easy, you can list a reason instantly of that faith life not being easy. In your head, it comes to mind unbidden, whatever the biggest thing is for you. But in this lesson, Notice how quickly it goes from, don't say Christ is too high or too low. The word is near you. Did you hear what just happened there? Christ equals what? The word. And I grant you, this is not the longest word in Greek. This is rhema, the spoken word. It's the same thing, though. The word equals Jesus Christ. They are inseparable. So I'll give you one example of faith life not being easy. When... God comes to you through a fellow sinner who is also a saint in Christ, and they say those words, I think some repentance is in order. I think you're falling into a sin that you're falling in love with. That's when faith like gets hard. In fact, I might say it's even harder when it's not somebody saying that to us, but somebody close to us whom we love. Oh, it's circle the wagons. How dare you talk to my family that way? Is faith life easy? And yet it's not impossible. We know why. Thank God that his word is Christ and therefore it is unchanging. God is not a car salesman haggling with us over some mutually agreeable contract that we come to at the end. It does not change his threats, but neither does his promise. Calling on the name of the Lord, a necessity. 
If you want to think of all of existence as a tapestry, if you want to pull the Lord out and say, there's no such reason, there's no reason to call on a Lord, he doesn't even exist. Give me one reason that bears any level of scrutiny why for the rest of this one day, forget about the rest of your life, today, why should you brush your teeth when you go home? Who cares? Life is meaningless. You just go to dust when you die. Why take care of your kids when you go home? Why? Why try at all at school or at work? Why not put your fist through your neighbor's skull the first chance you get? Who cares? There's no reason not to. The best reason we come up with, which does not bear up under scrutiny, is I don't want to suffer, so I'll do certain things to keep the suffering away until I die. Call on the name of the Lord. More important than you know. And you are more loved than you know. How did that test bed of Israel converting the religion of grace in the Old Testament into a religion exclusively of works, how did that work out for them? Not so good. In fact, I would say that empty, empty temple mount in Jerusalem to this day where there is no temple is God's exclamation point that the old Israel, the theocracy, is gone. Whatever is called Israel today is not what it was. How's it going with us? Is it going to be a cold business transaction between us and God, or is it living in joy under the grace of God, the love of God? I'll give you one example of that grace. God allowed you to have gas or electricity to get your car to church today, to get your car to the grocery store, to work tomorrow, to school, soon enough, the bus. That is just one example of thousands of people that God works with to bring you that energy so your car works. So that Minneapolis doesn't become a gridlock place with a bunch of cars just sitting in roads and nobody going anywhere. Grace. You live under much deeper grace under the cross. So as we think of this love of God, live under that joy. Believe in your heart that God is a God of love, and therefore I'm going to listen to his commands. Go ahead. If you want to, Israel, go ahead, individual human beings. If you want to say, I'm going to do this law thing perfectly so I'll live, go ahead, I'll wait, says Jesus. But now make the logical deduction. Instead of doing that and thinking that you can impress God that way, call the name of the Lord. Be a name caller of the name. Call on the name of the Lord and the righteousness that God has planted in you. What does it say? It says, don't say that salvation is unattainable. It is near. It is in your mouth. It is in your heart. Amen. We hope that today's meditation on God's Word has enriched you. Divine services are held right here in Bemidji, Minnesota at 8 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. on Sunday mornings. Sunday school and adult Bible study is also offered between our Sunday services at 9.15 a.m. Our church services are live-streamed at 8 a.m. on Sunday mornings and are available afterwards on our channel, St. Mark Lutheran Church Bemidji. If you're listening or watching this podcast, you are cordially invited to join us in person next week and every week. This is our fourth year producing this podcast, and there is a large archive of devotional material online available if you want to learn more about God and His Word. Visit www.stmarkbemidji.org or look in the show notes in this podcast for a link to this and many other meditations on God. You can also search for St. Mark Bemidji on YouTube to find our channel. If you have any questions or you would like more information about our church and its ministry, please visit our website, which is once again, www.stmarkbemidji.org All scripture readings are taken from the Holy Bible, New International Version, copyright 2011, and are used by permission from Zondervan. Meditation's daily devotional is published by Northwestern Publishing House and is also used by permission. If you enjoyed this podcast, please consider subscribing and telling a friend. May God bless the rest of your day. Hey there, parents. Are you on the lookout for a fantastic school in the Bemidji area that embraces Christian values? Well, look no further. Introducing St. Mark's Christian Day School, where education meets faith in an extraordinary way. At St. Mark's, we get it. We understand that your child's education should be rooted in God, compassion, and unwavering faith. 
Our experienced team of dedicated educators are here to provide a top-notch education to students in grades K through 8 that nourishes the mind, heart, and soul. With small class sizes and a personalized approach, we create a safe and dynamic environment where your child can explore the God-given talents and excel academically. Our teachers integrate biblical principles throughout the day, ensuring your child grows into a compassionate and morally grounded individual. Our students are also able to participate in extracurricular activities with the Bemidji School District. For more information about St. Mark's Day School, call John at 218-444-3939 or at principal at stmarksbemidji.org.